In this lesson, we're going to get the bow on the strings. But before we do that, we need to talk a little bit about different bow grips that you can try. I grip my bow like this. I have my thumb under the frog. I have my first finger around the stick at the knuckle, finger pointed back into the hole in the frog. The second and third finger ride on the frog and the pinky rides on top, angled down. And I'm not doing a lot of balancing with my pinky. Sometimes you'll notice as I'm playing, my pinky is even lifted up off the stick of the bow. Most of the people that I learned to play fiddle from play with this bow hold. Uh, I can't say much more about it. I know that it is not a classical bow hold, and it's just what I've seen around West Virginia and Kentucky. And so this is what I've chosen to do because it's what I've seen the most of. There are some other options. A more classical hold is to put your thumb in the hole in the frog, finger stretched more around the stick, second and third finger still on the frog, first finger still on top. And if you're interested in more classical technique, it's really not something that I'm good at teaching, neither in the bow nor the fiddle. So this isn't a great place to learn to play violin. I've learned from fiddle players. I learned to play the instrument down like this first, and then gradually it migrated up my body. I had some shoulder trouble, and, uh, and that's how I landed with the fiddle under my chin. But I really can't speak about hold technique at all because of that. I learned to play from guys that play like this. So I'm not going to talk about holding the fiddle at all, but I can share a few ideas on bow holds. That being said, this more classical idea, there are great books. I'll keep mentioning Suzuki books. I've looked at a few of the beginner Suzuki books and they're great. And I'm sure that'll come up in the next lesson also about fingerings. But if you want to see pictures of bow holds, the first Suzuki violin book has great photography of the more classical way to hold the bow. And then I've seen a lot of people who also choke up on the bow. Now, I don't know anything about where that comes from. I've just kind of seen it out and playing around. No one that I learned from really played that way, but it's definitely another popular way to play. It may make the balance easier and it may make speed easier. I'm not sure, but the guys that I learned to play from, they encouraged being able to play with all the hair from frog to stick. And if you're choked up, there's a whole part of the bow that you're not going to be able to use. So I hold the bow, again, at the frog, thumb under the frog, second and third finger ride on the frog, first finger around at the second knuckle. I'm tucked into the hole in the frog there, that little dip, and my pinky's riding on top. And so, because I hold the, fit, the bow that way, I'm able to bow from frog to tip and back. So I don't have any trouble, like if I were choked up, playing only with a little part of the bow. I don't have any opinion about what's right or wrong. I only know what I was taught and that's what I'm trying to share here. Now here's a friend to talk a little bit about how to hold your instrument. Hi, my name is Nora Friedman and I'm going to show you where to put your violin on your shoulder and how the left hand should look. Um, when you're setting up any part of your instrument, you want to have, you want to do it standing and you want to do feet um, spread out so that they're underneath your hips. The violin should um, live on the very top of your shoulder and be touching your collarbone and should be right next to your neck. So this is a little bit low and as you can see the violin's off the shoulder. And your nose will turn until it points right down at your scroll. You will, this really supports the violin between your shoulder and your head so that you can let go and do all that fancy stuff that you've seen great violinists doing. The violin hand should be softly placed at the end of the neck with a nice hole in here. We call it the mousy hole for kids. And you want your wrist to be in a neutral position, so not tucked out that way and not squeezed in this way either. And then the touch point 
is just about there, right below the um, middle knuckle of your finger. And your thumb, as you can see, is nice and straight underneath the neck of the violin. Have fun! Thanks, Nora. So if you start like this, then with the bow, you want to be in between the bridge and the bottom of the fingerboard, and you want your bow to be parallel. Perpendicular, excuse me. You want your bow to be perpendicular to the strings. Right there in the middle. And that's a good first exercise, to just get comfortable playing each string from the frog to the tip of the bow. And you can see as the bow is traveling closer to the instrument, my wrist is bending in this direction and it's extending as I come out. And I'm trying to do most of my motion from the wrist and the elbow and not from the shoulder. One great way to practice moving mostly from these joints is to play up against a doorway or up against the wall. So you'd actually anchor your elbow on the wall and play only from the elbow. So I can't move my shoulder at all when I'm playing like this. This is a seated version, but I would stand up, elbow on a wall, and play like this. So from here you can see my motion is coming not from the shoulder, but from the elbow and the wrist. And as I'm getting closer, my wrist is bending, further away it's extending. And I'll do that one more time just to show. And again, just playing the open strings here, G, D, A. As you get more and more comfortable, try to make that take longer and longer time. So you want to pull, excuse me, That's a good practice to get comfortable with the bow. And you can start to memorize the notes of the open strings if you, re if you remind yourself each time you're playing a string what the note name is of that string. The next thing I'd add to that practice is a shuffle bow. So this is a very common bowing in traditional Appalachian and old time fiddle. This bowing goes like this. Long, short, short, 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 long, and so on. Usually you'll
you'll start this bowing on a down bow. So with fiddlers that play for dances or what's kind of known as breakdown fiddlers, the down beat is often on a down bow. It's a common rule. It's a rule that's often broken, but just to state the rule in the beginning, you want the beginning of your phrases to start on a down bow. And so when we start this shuffle bowing, it can go in both directions because it kind of turns in and out on itself. So if we start it with a long bow on the down, long, short, short, the next long bow is on an up bow. Long, short, short. And then it repeats. And you want the beginning of the phrases of the tunes. When we get into playing some tunes, the beginning of the phrases will start on a down bow, often a long bow. So for now, let's just practice. Long, short, short, long. 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 And as you practice, you can try that on each string. So if you put it on the D string. And on the A string. I think that's a good place to stop for this lesson. We've learned some things about bow holds. We've learned the way to attack the string with a long bow. And we've learned a basic shuffle rhythm. Next, we'll add some notes with the fingers. <laughs>